new polling because we love polls here. <laughs> and it has a front runner falling back and an upstart gaining ground. Also, Bernie's got a big speech planned for today. He's going to lay out some specifics of his Medicare for All plan. Team Rising is here to get into that. Will Juwando is a Democratic strategist, council member at large in Montgomery County, Maryland, and Kelsey Bolar, senior news producer at The Daily Signal, visiting fellow at the Independent Women's Forum. Welcome to you both. Good morning. Good so we have morning. very interesting new polling out of, out of uh, New Hampshire. Joe Biden leading the pack at 21 percent. Andrew Yang at 5 percent making it Coming on up to the, the big screen for the first time in a yeah. while. But what has everybody talking about here is the 10 percent that Bernie Sanders is at. So we just talked with Nina Turner, co-chair of the National Bernie Sanders campaign. The real question here, Will, is what explains how he's able to only garner 10 percent in this poll? He won New Hampshire last time. Yeah, I mean, well, a couple things. It's early, mm -hmm. right? And every election, particularly this one, people want new, they want fresh, they want excitement. They then want why is Joe Biden leaving the poll? Yeah. <laughs> well, he's, he's, yeah. Up he's, he's also taking a slide, too. He I is. mean, it's a yeah, slower time. slide. Right. But, uh, I mean, the jump that uh, Elizabeth Warren and Harris have made, I mean, it's dramatic. I mean, almost uh -huh. eight, eight or ten points. That's right. Um, and so I, I think that's part of it. Um, I think they'll stabilize. I don't think Bernie will end up that deep on mm -hmm. the bench in New Hampshire, but uh, especially if Nina's running around the state right. for him. Yeah. But, <laughs> Nina's you, down in yeah. South Carolina for him right, right. now. Well, that, which is, which is important. But I, I, you know, I think when you have a set of ideas that have been out there for a while, it gets a little stale for some people. They want to mm -hmm. see something new. I really think that's what it is, and people want energy, and they and then when you have this racism going on and these, these tweets, I think they want to see diversity. So mm -hmm. I, the, you know, I think that's part of it, but I think he will come back up. This speech is maybe part of that uh, effort. Kelsey, what, what do you think? I mean, does, do the early states even matter as much as they used to? Also, we should mention the margin of error on that is 5.2%. So right. who the heck knows? What right, and a lot of the polls have been all over yeah, the map, so. frankly. Well, specifically yeah. in New Hampshire, I'm yeah. fascinated by the fact that Marion Williamson is actually polling higher than Book, Booker, Beto, <laughs> uh, and Gillibrand. I think yeah. that says a lot. Two that of them are sitting me, actually, uh, yeah. members of the United States Senate. Uh -huh. um, that said, I do think it's too early to be reading into polls right now. I am looking at the poll to see how the narrative on the Democrat side is shaping up. Is the more socialist wing of the Democrat Party mm -hmm. becoming the new identity, or is it the quote-unquote moderate Joe Bidens, who I would say, considering uh, much of his policy proposals that we've been learning about lately, are far from moderate, what, what used to be considered yeah. moderate. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I have a, a little bit of a theory here, and I, all the points about don't take one poll too seriously are well said. Um, if you, It's better to look at sort of the overall trends, which have shown Sanders losing a little bit of ground, but not that much ground. Um, but I think part of what's going on here is Elizabeth Warren and Kamala Harris and Buttigieg, the three of them together really appeal to this educated white liberal, totally. right? And yeah. last time around, Sanders was a candidate that was also appealing right. to that group. Right. And I think they're taking away from him in that category. Because if you deal, I, d I dug yeah. into some of these polls, if you d dig into the demographics, he performs best with people who make less than $50,000 a year. And his base is much more diverse this time around than it was yeah. last time, Will. Yeah, that's a good point. And I think uh, New Hampshire is the educated white. Is a white yeah. liberal yeah. educated yeah. kind yeah. of a yeah. place, I right? Talk about they have more uh, state house of representatives per capita than any, they have 400 members of right. the state house for yeah. a population that's very small, so they're very engaged. Um, I think Kamala Harris in particular, we were talking about this backstage, mm -hmm. is uh, well positioned to really rise quickly, and I think you're seeing that too, because mm -hmm. she appeals to so many people across the board. Um, and Elizabeth Warren, same thing. I think she's, she's having a much better performance with black voters than I thought she would um, and, and, uh, and is resonating. So I think that's right. That's an interesting theory. I, th I think you'll continue to see that. I'm really curious to see uh, how everyone does in South Carolina. I think that's going to be like a watershed for the race yeah, and, and really start true. to separate people. I've said that many times true. here, too. And um, it, it's because it's true. You cannot win the Democratic nomination nationally without appealing to black voters. And 60 percent, 70 percent of you include Latinos, of the Democrats who vote in the primary there are minorities. And so if you can't win South Carolina, that or is a least. true 
or at least Do show well. up. Yeah. That is a bellwether for whether you're going to win this thing all around, especially with California yeah. moving up and all that. But we should also talk about Bernie's speech today, which, like you said, you know, it might be an effort, but I really do see it as a, a watershed in the party, and it's, it's kind of a dividing line, which is, are you for Medicare for all, or are you not? And that really, I think, comes down to where it is. So, Kelsey, what, what, what do you think that Joe Biden, I mean, Joe Biden has already trashed Medicare for all to AARP, but what about the other candidates? Where are they going to fall? Yeah. I think what's important for voters to ultimately mm. take away from the debate on, on the Democrat side of health care uh, and their specific version is really, while there all are different versions, they are all one version of the same. They are all leading our country in the same direction, which mm -hmm. is government-controlled health care, which is a VA-style health care system for every single American um, mandated um, you know, with, with no choice. And, of course, this would result in, in fewer, if any, choices for Americans. Mm -hmm. and ultimately higher costs. I mean, what has the government proven? In what sector have they proven that they can actually be efficient and lower costs? Um, so Medicare, that's yeah, one segment. It's working, it's working it's pretty well. Medicare it's is, is cheaper per person. I mean, the, the costs are better with Medicare than with private insurance. The idea of, of a Medicare for all does not pull well among all Americans. It's somewhere around 30 percent, and then and then that's among not true. A, a, it's very a much government dispute, style, yeah. a, a government mandated health care system is not popular right now, and that is why you're seeing the, the fractions in the Democrat side because they're trying to navigate this. Um, it might play to their base, but it is not playing to. A general election voter. Well, there's been two well, polls yeah. recently, um, and I, I actually expect there are going to yeah. be some more coming out today that polled on Medicare for all, including, you know, if you tell people private insurance is going to go away. Right. And they found majority support. They sure. found strong support among independents. They found overwhelming support among Democratic primary voters. And I tend to see it the way that soccer laid it out. Mm. Either you believe that health care is a right and you are right. going to cover all people or you don't. Biden care, by its structure, would more people get insured? Yes. Would all people get insured? No. It would leave millions of people off of insurance. I do think that is a fundamental litmus test and dividing line in this primary. I, I agree. And I think Democrats have to be bold. Look, I worked in the White House when we passed Obamacare. It was a big step forward. Um, but it's time to take that next step. And, and if you believe health care is a right, it's a fundamental right, I think Democrats need to be on that side. Is it going to be complicated to transition? Sure, but I, I think back to when Bernie had that Fox Town Hall, and, said, and they had, they tried to set him up, and they asked, "Does everyone want to uh, like keep their insurance, or how would you feel if it was mm. free and you could have it for everyone?" And everyone raised their hand; they were clapping. They were on it, it, Bernie's it, side. They were on, on Bernie's side on that. I think the public, once you get them understanding, it's going to be cheaper, more available, everyone's covered, no discrimination. I think people are going to be for those things. If you pull those individual things, everyone's for them. So. I think it's really a messaging battle of being bold and Republicans do this better than us a lot of times they'll they'll pick the policy and then they'll push the message and then they'll change people's minds. Yeah. I think I think that's what we details. need to do on this. That's interesting. Even well, Barack Obama has come out for Medicare for all. <laughs> that's true. Way. That's right. <laughs> all right, we're going to power down and come back up and we're going to debate some more stuff. So, stay tuned.